Yeah, Maddie, they seem to have slipped back from that 2020 season whereby they did look like they would be the next logical challengers to Leinster. But ultimately, for one reason or another, there does seem to have been that slip backwards. Yeah, they haven't, Gordon hit the nail on the head. They haven't grown. And at the elite end, if you're not growing and moving and improving, you're actually going backwards because everyone else is. Mm. Um, why that is, you know, that, that's an internal question that uh, Coach McFarlane will have to answer. But there, there's no doubt that they haven't progressed the way I thought they could. And I guess the province thought they could. There's a, there, there is also a real difficulty when you, I, when I coached up there, I noticed it. They do, the players and the team get a lot of praise and a lot of publicity. And it can be a bubble up there because they are the only um, team in town, if you like, within the media. And, you know, it's, it's not unusual for the players to get that they can get a little ahead of themselves and think they've already made it. And, and it just looked to me, and Gordon used the term, uh, uh, an emotional performance, and I agree with that. But you've got that's hunger too, isn't it? You know, when, you, when a team is really hungry, that's emotional. And I just think they're, when, when you're just that few percentage points off at the top end of rugby, you're a million miles off, mm. and and that's what's happened with them. They're, you know, they, and they've had they've been so close a number of times. We've got to be fair and put some balance in this. In appalling conditions against La Rochelle, they should have beaten them like in the last seconds. And there's one or two other games that they found a way to lose. But again, I think that's just that progression we haven't seen. What we thought we would get from them. Um, one thing that might hamper that progression or not, or it certainly looks like it could bring about a little bit of change, Gordon, is that Gregor Townsend's been pretty open about his talks with John Cooney and trying to bring him on board for Scotland, which looks like it's going to happen. It's whether or not it happens during the course of the Six Nations is probably the bigger question. Um, has that been a distraction for the likes of Cooney and for Ulster? Um, because obviously that's going to impact on contract talks and, and you know um, all that kind of stuff. But like that wouldn't help necessarily a top level player having that much discussion around their future yeah I don't like the kind of I don't know John very very well but I don't he seems like a kind of guy that that doesn't really stuff doesn't really seem to seem to bother him mm. um I wouldn't say it's been a been a frustration um for his teammates either like it's it's again it's not one of these weird little I don't think when they designed this rule they thought uh, John Cooney Irish, wasn't in mind. Uh, yeah. Two Irish halfbacks uh, potentially moving to Scotland. Um, just feels weird. Um, but again, it's, it's like, you know, if he does, he does. He becomes an overseas uh, qualified player and probably won't see out the rest of his career in, 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 in Ulster. Like, listen, that's fine. Wants to play the World Cup. Um, you know, that's a, like, everything is a series of choices, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I think his form and even, you know, that, that is like the type of player he is. It's a front. He's a front foot player, and you know, like anybody else, will look a different player on the back foot. And their pack has been on the back foot for you know their you know Cooney's form is like completely intertwined to that of his pack. And when they're on the front foot, when they're moving forward, he is he looks a million dollars and looks you know the clearly the second best scrum half in Ireland behind uh, Gibson Park. Um, and for most scrum halves and most players playing on the back foot. Um, you know, you really have to be a special, different type of gravy kind of player to be able to play on the on on the, on the back front and deliver similar results. Um, so it'll be it will be like it's going to be really interesting to see what he does and if he does take that opportunity to go. Matt, what have you thought of this Scottish recruitment of of our our boys, as it were? Well, I think if you if you approach it from two points, mate, it's it's it certainly tells you a lack of development within. Scottish rugby, which is, you know, since I was there, it's been 20 years that they, they've really struggled at academy levels to produce uh, high-quality players um, in the numbers required. Uh, look, there's a whole lot of reasons for that. The 20 years ago, they gave up. They had four provinces mm. when we went professional, and they gave up too. There was talk that the borders... When Gordon and I were working together, the Borders were a team and they were going to give up the Borders franchise and move it to London Scottish and that all fell apart so they actually just gave up the franchise. So they do have to look, um, you know, to South Africa. They've got a lot of players that are, uh, that are 
eligible through uh, uh, living in, in the uh, UK for a certain period of time and they're looking further further afield. Look, I, I think it's just the way of the world. Um, and the other part is if, you, if you're, uh, you know, Ben Hurley and Kearney and you're not getting selected for Ireland, you've only got a few years of professional rugby in you and you've got the opportunity to, to play at a World Cup and represent um, you, your grandparents' heritage, um, I, I can understand why they would do it. I, I certainly can. It's different, different if you're getting selected for Ireland, but the, these guys aren't. Mm. And so I think they, um, they have every right to go and pursue that. So, so the, the, two, the, two points, the two points is that Scotland should be producing the more. And the other one is that these guys have every right to go and do it. And good luck to them. I hope they enjoy it because you, you only get a few years and you're retired a long time. Is that ultimately, Gordon, why you see why Cooney's face is never really fit in an Ireland context? I mean, you're talking about them when they're playing front, front foot rugby. He seems like one of the best scrum halves in the world. When they're not, he's not. So therefore you can kind of see why Andy Farrell won't necessarily be banking on somebody like that as being his backup to a Jameson Gibson Park. Uh, you know, but I think I, I, I did say that's every, there's very few, like you have to be, I think that probably you look at someone like uh, Ruin Pienaar, he was a guy who could, playing in that nine uh, position, was able to change games. Mm. When things weren't going, he was the momentum generator for his teams like when he used to be you know when he used to arriving to rooks and you have that big long you know big long neck sticking up looking over and you just see the ball getting dropped on the foot and rolling into touch creating that kind of like i'm just saying it's a really really special player that's not in any way a, a veiled dig at john cooney i'm just saying that's you know he is super on the front foot he's you know is incredible and you know Ninety-eight percent of scrum halves will struggle on the will struggle on the on the on the on the back foot. Um, yeah, and he's like, I think he's. It's just him having to make peace with the fact that he's not being picked here for whatever reason. Um, and I don't think anybody is ever is any clearer as to why he's not in the in the in the in the more involved. Um, he's kind of looking at Scotland, so if he doesn't have a clear understanding for it. Yeah, it's still. Like Ben Healy, as someone saying, was was born, was qualified for Scotland the day he was born. Yeah. Um, but hasn't represented Ireland. I think there is a slight um, wrinkle in that. John Cooney's played ten times for Ireland, so that's you know I know there is a, a loophole there for you. Um, once you're happy with it, it's I just I suppose it's not something I could ever ever see myself doing. Were you qualified for someone else, Gordon? You're not telling us. No, no. It's like, it's like, do you know what? It's like, um, you know, at very at two at two different times in my career, I got offered to go to. I was I got offers uh, to go to two different two, two other clubs, and one was in the UK and one was uh, Ulster, um, and and France. You know, the, couldn't couldn't settle with the one in the UK, but the Ulster one, it just like it was brought up right through the Leinster system. Yeah. Just, it's just like, oh, I couldn't, I genuinely couldn't put that jersey on. So, you know, I think there's a, there's a, a thing you have to, there's a, like when you take money out of sport sometimes in this professional, in professional rugby and um, there is, you know, there is something special about representing your, your, your country. And I think for me, and then again, this is, and it's not do whatever you want. I don't, I don't really care. I like back you to, to do it. You have, picked a country and now it's like uh ah, yeah no i'm gonna go and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna veil of a loophole like listen i understand what is there i just again saying i can't i can't ever see myself being able to kind of go give the same dedication if you did do it how yeah. would you like you can't say you love scotland as much as you as you loved playing for ireland it's not something you grow up with that was just a little taster of tonight's Monday Night Rugby with Gordon Darcy and Matt Williams. We will have another little soupçon from that elsewhere in our YouTube feed. Or if you want to see and indeed hear the full thing entirely, then all you have to do is subscribe to the OTB Rugby feed wherever you happen to consume your podcasts. And while you're there, check out a great little podcast called Rugby Daily. I hear its host is very, very good indeed.